All right, so I think we're online. So, um, yeah, so I guess the purpose of this, of this hangout is to talk about uh, the campaign that we're looking to do together. So I think probably the best way to start it off would be to talk about the idea that Melorian threw out there. Um, although it, it kind of varied pretty substantially from what I had suggested originally. And so um, we could throw out that idea as well. So anyway, so Brian, you said we, uh, we have a rotation. One of us plays. Um, if you lose, then you have to take the wizarding hat. Yes, <laughs> that just seems like it's a loss on top of a loss. Um, okay, and then if you win, you get to propose uh, three armies against which you'll play next. And if you win with a massacre, you get to choose what army you're going to use. No, you get to... I'm sorry, wait. If you win, you get to choose... This is for the next person, yeah. For the next, not your game, for the next person. You get to choose, make three options out of whatever they have available in their community. And um, if you want the master, you get to tell them which army they have to use to fight it. That's right. The, the wizard hat only affects you. Everything else is for the next guy in the rotation, for that idea anyway. Okay. So, um, I mean, I like it for simplicity's sake. And even if we if we decided to use something else about with the wizarding hat, like maybe it's not that, it's something else. I mean, what I like, instead of saying the wizarding oh, yeah. hat, I like the idea of if you lose, then somebody else gets to give you something like that, some kind of stipulation that kind of just messes with you. Um... Well, let's, let's talk about that first before I move on to anything else. Any thoughts? Well, I can't think of a more terrible piece of war gear than the Wizarding Hat. So, <laughs> if, you want to, if you want to make sure somebody didn't win the game, <laughs> the Wizarding Hat is definitely the tool to do it. And it's funny because they just lost, right? I mean... Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to find a worse piece of war gear. But we could... I, I, I like the idea of being able to win the opportunity to mess with each other. Um, so if we went down this path, instead of saying if you win with a master, you get to choose what army so-and-so uses, because if somebody's going to tell me I have to use either, what, Britonia or Beastman or Empire, I don't care. I mean, they're mm -hmm. my arms. Um, but instead of that, if you win with the Masker, you get the opportunity to tell me, hey, Chad, you have to take the Wizarding Hat. Or you can't take Heroic Killing Blow on your Bretonian Lord. Or, you, can, you know, something like that. Um, I think that could be kind of fun. I like the war gear. I, I, I like, just be I simple, like, like if you win by a Massacre, here. maybe you just... Okay. I was or maybe just like a full design, right? If you win by a massacre, just fully design. Oh. Brian, we, I, yeah, you're, you're in and out, man. Uh, Anthony, could you tell what he was saying? Something about winning by a massacre. It seems like the internet is editing Brian out of the whole conversation. Mm. Try it again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how about if you win by a massacre, you design the lord that the other person uses. So it's kind of like that whole thing, you pick a war gear, but you're doing the whole bit. I don't know, I mean, it's, you could go either way, yeah. No, I like that. Or, or what if it wasn't just their lord or their, their general? What if it was, you get to pick one aspect of the army? Like you can say, you can't use great swords, or you have to use great swords, or, you know, you have to use this character. I've custom designed this character and you have to use it. Just anything like that. I think the denial of a unit's better because I could say you have to take crossbowmen, you'll take ten of them, and it's not going to have a big impact on your game. But if I say you can't use your great swords, that's like a five, 400, 500 point unit. If you said I couldn't take my great swords, you just made my list much more competitive. 
than what it is now. I don't know. Have you seen some of my battle reports? I get eaten by them like on a weekly basis. But, but how big do they bring their units up? <laughs> Forty. Yeah, thirty-six just isn't enough. I think I think if you're gonna go, you need to go forty or forty plus a couple extra. Well, I don't think the four is the difference. I think it's the the the, the warrior priest, the Huracanum to hit. You know. Yeah. That's that. That's what makes the difference. Thirty-six or forty is whatever. I don't know. Thirty-six. Okay, it's a different conversation. Hmm. Um, okay, so let me go down a different path, and then maybe you two can decide which. Um, you know, if you want to, re which path you like going down. So one of my original thoughts was, you know, we can actually do a Bretonia campaign where we say, hey, we all own Bretonia. Let's, for the purposes of the campaign, let's play Bretonia. And um, there are just certain restrictions. You know, you, you come from a certain province. There, that dictates certain things you can and cannot have. And if you if you ever lose and a character is, dis is, um, is lost in the battle, then you have to earn the right to bring those magic items again. So, for instance, you can't bring them in the next game, and you have to beat that same army type to get those magic items back before you can use them again. Something along those lines. How about the virtues? Where are the, how are the virtues going to work? Like, where, where, where does Bretonia crank out for Royal Killing Blow? <sighs> That was a great sigh by somebody. It wasn't. It? <laughs> um, okay. I'm I don't know. I would probably say virtues would be similar. Well, I don't know. I'd probably just say if, if you lost a character with a certain virtue, you couldn't bring it the next game, and just leave it at that. Or you build a core of characters. So you build like ten. Oh, now he's totally dead. So <laughs> you, you bring a core of characters, like ten or twelve. You build them. And depending upon what province you're in, or if they, they got wounded or killed in the previous battle, that'll dictate. So if you're fighting in this province, you got your Royal Killing Blow Lord, but otherwise you get the Hippogriff guy, or the whatever dude happens to be available. Um, yeah, no, I'd, I'd be cool with something like that. I actually, with Melorian, helped me a couple of years ago design some rules, like province by province, what has to be taken or can't be taken. You know, because there's some provinces, if you look at the map and the fluff, uh, Pegasus Knights the Pegasi only come from certain provinces. So we said, that's cool. You can only take them if you're, if you're using that province. And so now all of a sudden you can't take Peg Knights. I mean, that's kind of a big deal. Um, but the reason I originally started that idea was because I was getting bored playing the same list every time. But why not take Peg Knights? I mean, I like them. You know, they fit my list. But when I had a situation where I, I wasn't allowed to take them, well, that's kind of cool, you know. I, I think it would force diversity, because otherwise I'm just taking the same thing over and over again. I mean, trebuchets are another big thing. I mean, some lords completely disdain them. So not being able to take your two trebs, that's, that could be game losing yeah. to not have that 180 points of war machines. I, I like it. I'd, I'd be down for, you know, it would give me a reason to dust off for Tony again, because otherwise they're not coming out. It's just, yeah. You know, they're just not. So... And I think Bretonia kind of fights an uphill battle anyway. I think once we start handicapping ourselves with Bretonia, uh, we might find ourselves losing a lot. Um, and I'm okay with that. I mean, um, I wonder if, if every loss gives you more of a handicap if <laughs> it got to the point where you're just like, I need a newbie. <laughs> Give me a brand new player because <laughs> otherwise I'll never get out of this hole. Well, I don't think it needs to be a handicap. I just think it needs to be... Um... It needs to be restrictive based upon the fluff. I like you said, Bretoni's already pretty pretty well gimped, and I think we could gimp each other by saying you can only take from the lore of heavens, for instance, for your level four instead of beasts. That's a big change to the way my army comp goes, along with the different characters. I mean, that's that, that's a whole new Bretonia for me. Yeah. So, what's your knee jerk reaction in terms of which path do you think we should? Uh, pursue ideas down the first one um, where it's a little more it's, it's just a lot more simple or the second one where it's, it's a lot more you know complex in terms of what you can take and, and, and uh, the ramifications of winning or losing I always like the Bretonia route <laughs> because that's that's the, that's my baby that's what I always want um, I also think that it's going to be difficult for me to sometimes line up matchups I have a lot of armies in my area but it's not always at my beck and call to get like the Chaos Dwarf player 
or to get the um, or to get the high elf player or to get the you know this player or that player. So in a two week time span, two weeks is a lot of time for me to get a game. I get it four games in two weeks, but can I get a game against that army? You know, I don't I don't really know. So I just wouldn't want to bog down the campaign by my inability to find matchups. That would upset me. Anything else I'm okay with, but I just don't want to be I'd rather it be the Odin's on me to own the model and make the changes than to try to get my opponent to bring a certain army and be within that two-week window. Right. Yeah, if we went the Bretonia route, then um, really, because really I haven't said anything about who you face. You can face whoever you want. And sometimes it just needs to be that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just worried about, about facing variable, um, variable matchups. That's my concern. There are certain armies I know I can get every week, and then there are certain armies that you have to take a few just off the shelf entirely. Wood Elves, Normal Dwarves in my area, those two don't exist at all. Beastmen don't exist at all. So there's three armies right there that I'm not going to fight. Other Bretonians, there's one other Bretonian player. He shows up like once every three months. So there's there's almost a third, a quarter of the armies that I can't play because um, well, I can give somebody my Bretonian army, but the other three I don't have. Um... So that that's my concern. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, that was the original idea anyway. It takes a lot more, it takes a little more setup. That I'll, I'm not really worried about the setup. Um, how come I kind of like the idea of you know one thing that Malorian's idea was was incorporating was viewer interaction, and I'd love to figure out a way to to uh, work that into it. And I also like the idea of how we mess with each other. Because again, if we follow my idea of purely, there was no messing with each other. It's just if you win, if you or if you lose, or if you lose a character, these are the ramifications. I, I I think what we could do is is if the campaign progresses through provinces of Britonia, and, and you figure that we're we're certain characters or lords, and we have to augment our army with what's in that province, depending upon if you win or if you lose, or if I'm in your province or whatnot, you could give me a unit and say you have to take. This unit of Bretonia. You have to take battle pilgrims. You have to take, you know, you have to take no trebs, or you have to take um, some other augmented thing. You know, you have to take fifty peasant golmen, something of that extent. We we, awesome. we can always do that, you know. So. Okay. But I don't know otherwise. Are we getting any comments on what it would be? I Not a single comment yet. So yeah, if you guys are watching, you know, if you have any um, any thoughts about this, you know, chime in. Let me see. Yeah, if I can... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just just wondering. Have you noticed what the time lag is for comments? Because it seems to me it's probably like five. Minutes. There's there's a ton of comments actually. Um, I'm viewing the stream from YouTube. So, let me see. I'm oh, just... there it is. Jeez. I yeah, on... it's, the, dra the slag is horrible. Yeah, Malorian failed animosity. They didn't put enough hamsters in the wheel that runs the Canadian internet, and um, it fizzled out. Daniel is suggesting we run the characters through the Mordenheim injury table. If uh... guys get killed. That's intriguing. I have no idea what that is. I'm sure it's horrible. <laughs> I'm sure it's like the guy lost a leg. Minus two movement. In fact, the word says, uh, how about you can only take name brand characters. I, I like the idea of making sure named characters are in the mix. I like that. You know. Yeah, the Fey Enchanters would be cool. The Green Knight would be awesome. I could get, I'd have to get a Lord on Hippogriff. I don't have him anymore. I got rid of him once 8th edition came around, but um, but King Loren wouldn't come out very often anyway. I mean, he is like the man. He's like Carl Franz. He doesn't just show up every Wednesday. Yeah. Well, apparently there are two arch lectors in all of the Empire, and I bring one every single game. So. Yeah, I see one every single game. So, I guess it's not too big of a deal. Um, are we competing against each other, or are we all like on our own individual game board trying to reach like the Grail? That's, and then we're just trying to screw each other as we go towards the Grail. I don't know. I mean, in one way, it could just be is it an excuse to force us to, to take lists that otherwise you would never take and then just have fun, play some games. 
Mm-hmm. Um, we if we could, I, I mean, yeah, we could try to figure out some kind of ultimate, you know, objective we're trying to accomplish and see, you know, race to the top kind of thing. What what I don't want to do, I mean, I don't want to to force hard decisions on any of us. So, I mean, you can always choose opponents. I've got opponents that are really, really good around here, and some that are just, you know, not very experienced. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't see. If it becomes a competition, and we can't control who you're playing against. I, I just don't want to force hard decisions. Like if somebody's like, you know, do I play the tough character, the, the tough player that's going to give a good game, or do I play the, the easy one that's going to give me the win that I need? Well, I'm just going to show up and play whoever I play at the store every Thursday. I mean, except for the game against Doug where I'm, like, pressed for time and I need to get a game in against his empire. I'm going to, whoever's at the store and is available to play, that's who I'll play. That's how I kind of do it every week anyway. Um, yeah, it's totally different here. I've got to say, the way it works in this in Raleigh, it's kind of weird. I kind of have to set up games in advance. Um, if you show up, you just, yeah, not everybody else has games set up and you just don't play. When I was down there, I didn't focus on fantasy. The fantasy was kind of dead. It was very um, warm horde centric which was kind of upsetting to me. But it's nice to see that it turned around. But I, I like scheduling because then I know I have a game when I get there. Sometimes I'll get to the store and everybody's already playing. And it's like, well, now i got to wait for the first game to wrap up and I get home late. So. Yeah. You know what was cool about Dayton, man? And instead of having a game night, you could go down anytime Saturday or Sunday, anytime, and find yeah. a game. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have that here. We have Thursdays, the, the fantasy night, and you're either there or you're SOL. Yeah. I mean, we, we can try to set up a game, but it's hard. Uh, I'm just so what, if, what if we ran with the idea of when we start the tournament, we have a list of characters. We include all the named characters, and then we, make, we create builds with characters. Mm-hmm. And... I don't know if we all have access to them or if we divvy them up or how we do that, but um, and I wouldn't care. We have we could all have the same list and and just let it be with whatever. Um, but I kind of like that. And again, I like the idea that if you lose a character, you can't use them again until you beat that army. You have to, you know, that's your way of getting them back. Right, run them through the run them through some kind of injury table, or you know, have a queue of characters, and when they when they die, they, they go on the bench for a period of time, or you know, if they got swallowed by a dragon or a giant or something, maybe they're just dead, dead. Because um, then I'm not throwing my heroic killing blow lord into everything. Because right. it's like, well, do I lose the battle or do I win the battle and lose the war? Because now he's on the bench for four games, and who do I take? Yeah. So that, that, that's a thought. And characters are easy to build and create and crank out. They cost about the same points, so list the side. You know, it, it's a flexible um, space. Now, how can we screw with each other? Uh, that's a good question. I think army composition, so if we do kind of like a quest for the Grail, you have to go around Bretonia. Sometimes you have to go outside of Bretonia. And there are certain areas where you're not going to be have access to certain things, like war machines. There's going to be certain areas where you don't get access to Pegasus Knights. There's going to be certain areas where you really have to take certain things. Um, you know, there's there, there's those kinds of constraints. Like if you want to take Rail Knights, you got to take ba- Battle Pilgrims. I normally don't do that. For me, that would be a constraint. For you, I don't think so much, but. I think I've used every unit in the book. I, I'm not. I'm comfortable using any unit in the in the Bretonnia book, unless, like when you said, take fifty archers. I'm like, shit. Yeah. <laughs> he sucks. That's a, that's, a, that's a that's a lot of bodies. Um, yeah, that's another thing. I mean, because it is constrained by what you have. I've got a pretty extensive Bretonnia list, but like Malorian, I don't think he owns anything on foot. Right. So we really couldn't give him anything that would, unless he starts to proxy, but then it starts to get sloppy. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to. I'm trying to think here. How do you screw each other without being like completely blatant and forceful? Well, we could do this. I mean, what if we did something similar? We said, it, you know, one advantage of scoring a win or a massacre win is you get to affect the next person's game, and they already have certain certain constraints anyway. Um, but you get to do one more. 
you know. Maybe it could just be tiers of how well we do. Like you said, an extreme massacre. Like, you want to really screw somebody? You can't pray. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to pray to another god because this one's taken. <laughs> Enjoy your loss. It's like, oh. That's awesome. <laughs> Wow. You're you're just kind of mean spirited at heart, aren't you? <laughs> at the end of the day, maybe. I am from, I am from Jersey, so Yeah, oh, there you have it. But yeah, I mean that could be like the absolute like you table your opponent, you won by massacre. You can stick it like if we each had a chart that we were trying to build up to get to a certain point, if I won by a tabling, I could pick either you or Malorian to take that horrible blow because you're too close and I gotta keep you down or you know, I wouldn't just want it to be a rotation where we keep passing it to like one person. It just keeps getting screwed over and over again. It should be like selective. And if I screwed you over the last time and I get another opportunity, I can't screw you over twice. I have to give it to yeah. you know, the other guy. Yeah, I think so. That seems fair. Hmm. Luke said, in a minor or medium losses, you can choose a spell you can't take from a lore. Maybe restrict the lore that you have. Like, each wizard has a specific lore. Like, this is my level 4 to beast. That's my lockdown. She dies, I lose beast for a period of time. Or, you know, you, you tell me, okay, you can, you can take whatever lore you want, but you can't take this spell. You can't take Savage. That's, that's constraining. Not as constraining as you can't pray, but it's still not fun for me. Yeah. Oh, here's an idea. Okay, so Hodge Dog has an idea. He said, the winner gets his pick of magic items first, then no one else can use that item. <laughs> I guess that would extend to virtues, because virtues are basically magical items. What if we had, like, a draft? <laughs> I love it. That's great. Yeah, That's... If, yeah of all magic items and virtues... And right at the start of it, you get what you get. That's what you have to use. And it, and when you, when a character dies and you lose the game, because if he dies and you win the game, then he just got knocked down and you pick him up. But if it both happen, then you lose that item, and now it's up for dibs again somehow. I, I really like that. I like the draft concept because that would be really funny and entertaining in a broadcast. Um, I'm sure somebody in YouTube land that's at least subscribed to you could do some kind of thing where there's like a draft board of the items and the virtues and like, yeah, that'd be really cool. I think and that's if person, and if it's a map and it's a province, if your character dies and he's got the the lance that uh, I forget the name of it, the lance that makes you reroll wounds, he drops that thing, he's dead, his army's routed in that province, and you have to go to that province to, if you want that item, go pick it up. Well. Let me think. What if we each owned certain provinces, but there was a benefit to fighting other provinces? But the downside is, if you lose your items in other provinces, whoever owns other province gets those items. That sounds like Munchkin Quest, the board game, where you carry around your items, and then when you die, you drop them in the, the board, and somebody <laughs> else can go pick them up. And it works. It's a good mechanism. It actually, it actually works. I would want Mussolini. That'd be my one thing. I want to I wanna have like five knights and 500 black knights. That's it's like a swamp. All the peasants are like more diseased than they normally are. That's definitely where I would. That that that's actually New Jersey. So there, I have it. <laughs> it's mine. I I think that one is worth playing with. That's kind of I don't know what the advantage would be like because otherwise I just fight all my battles in my home territory. But if I needed to branch out, and there's something to be gained, but there was higher risk because if I lose whatever, uh, I think that would be that could be really. Interesting. And if somebody starts to run away with it, we could just say your supply lines are stretched or your army's exhausted. We'll, we'll gimp you in some way. If somebody really starts to run the table. Um, I love this one comment. Force Malorian to take the virtue of empathy. That will teach him <laughs> for having no models on foot. Just one guy running around after the knights. <laughs> he shipped me his one knight model on foot. I have to ship it back to him or something. <clears throat> he can make it. Make it out of an orc. Put a Bretonian head on it. <laughs> yeah, so it's, knows it's, how, how Malorian's now posting comments. Yeah. He's, he's given up. Oh, he gave up a while ago. He gave up like 20 minutes ago. 
Uh, let's see. I'm, re I'm reading some of the comments. Instead of penalties for losing, why not just make bonuses for winning? Keep it positive and saying negative. Good. Anthony's from uh, New Jersey, though, so we like to keep the negative spin on things if we can. <laughs> no, so this one says make up a map. Section off each province, give each player a map. Allow the players to challenge a player on what land they want to conquer, like a real war. Make up rules for each piece of land. A lot of that's what we're talking about, except I don't. You know, I think we actually could have instances where we play each other via a Skype game, but for the most part, I don't want it to rely on that. No. But that could be. I mean, that, that actually could be fun, is we start off with certain provinces, and if you do such and such, like you win a certain number of games otherwise, then you can challenge somebody for a province, and we do a Skype game. Mm -hmm. Take their stuff. That'd be brutal. <laughs> Malloy's saying do the draft and then randomize the items that are lost between the other two. I just don't like the randomization. I like the you have to go get the stuff in some capacity. You're seeing the comments before I do. That's funny. Like I've seen I... them before you do because I'm on the actual comment page for the video. And they're, they're automatically updating, so I'm seeing them in real time. That's, a, that's not a bad idea. I wonder if... Um... If you're in Google, you're going to have to go to Internet Explorer or another browser because otherwise it's hard to see it as yourself. But no, I'm not going to worry about it now. That's not a bad idea. Hmm. Negatives to the whole army. Well, the army is already pretty gimped across the board on stats and is already overpriced. So if you were to like to make... Knights of the Realm, Weapon Skill 3, you might as well just throw them away. Because <laughs> they're already worse in almost every way compared to an Empire Knight or almost anybody else's Knight. So, I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, they, they, and they certainly don't have a lot of the new toys. No, I mean, it, the one thing we do have is we have some nice old items, and when we're, you're already restricting that selection. Um... That's that to me. That's enough of a gimp, in my opinion. I mean, the new books will just like I have no answer for a demon prince. My my demon prince army will eat my Bretonian army in about two turns. So uh, yeah. you know, if you gimped me any more than than what I already am, I I lose maybe in one turn. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Okay, um, and I'm now seeing what you were seeing earlier. Make the knights upgradable so they can go through the ranks from Eric to Grail. I guess if a unit survives enough battles or does something cool, you could promote the knights up. I, I did that. I mean, I was doing stuff like, like uh, I had a BSB that on that piece of magical terrain, he randomly got heroic killing blow. Like, it's one of the options. <laughs> and then he killed a Hydra. So I promoted him. <laughs> he became my next row, Kill and Blow Lord. Um, T. Strauss is a good idea. Rather than an item or virtue draft, build like 10 different characters and do a draft of the characters. I mean, that's an idea. Yeah, we can do that. There, there's a lot of actual options for how we would allocate equipment. I actually like the idea of not just what you can take, but what you have to take, because there's so many magic items that nobody ever takes, and it's like, take one. You know, well, that could be that's more province restrictive, in my opinion. That that would be the that would be the thought. We could always draft the war gear and then the characters, and then that would dictate what provinces we had. Like a, a, a lord built like this would be from where. You you drafted that guy. You now have that province. What is, I don't understand this one comment that says, did the Sustainable Center just advocate IE, Internet Explorer? Internet Explorer. Only in the most desperate of times. Use Google? Yeah. yeah so just wants. use anything other over IE. Yeah. Malorian just said, why don't we do something that builds up over a year and then runs our final lists are used in the next Brawler's Bash? The only concern I have about that is I have to take Bretonia, and I know it's not getting updated in a year. So I'm going to spend like half a grand and go 0 and 8, 0 and 10, however many games. 
games I have to play when I go to Brawlers? Brawler Bash, that's, it's pretty competitive as it is without gimping ourselves in any way whatsoever. <laughs> I, I would be okay taking Bretonia to it, but I'd sure want to design it. Especially at 3,000 points. Yeah. Yeah, there's some... If it was any army, I'd say sure, but not... not... If they were going to get a book even soon, I would say yeah, but... Yeah. So one concern I have is, I think it would, I would, I like the idea of, of having this something that could be followed visually somehow. Um, I don't know, the, you know, the, I guess the first thing that comes to mind is some way maybe on a map. I mean, like you think, you know, if you're winning, you're, you're expanding your borders or your, your, your borders are shrinking, something, but I don't know exactly, but there almost needs to be a way to follow it that somebody could, could um, step in and see what the status is or see how things are going, have a reason to get caught up in the story if they were to step into it, you know, midway. I, I think the best way to do that would be the map. And then when we play people, whoever we play is on the map. I mean, Bretonia is getting invaded and attacked by everyone, like, almost on a daily basis, especially now. I mean, it was kind of doom and gloom when they wrote the fluff almost ten years ago. I mean, we got Dark Elves showing up, like, every Wednesday... <laughs> we got orcs popping up our ally the wood elves every summer comes out and just rapes half the countryside beastmen are everywhere so I mean we could always do that where we map, march around the board but again there has to be a purpose for us marching around the board or we could always do like an errantry campaign a knight's errant campaign see I've heard of that but I've never, I, that was before my time I don't really think about it the only thing I know is that they like when there's too many errant knights. Apparently, enough people aren't dying fast enough, and they're running out of like keeps for the errant knights to go like take over. They'll call on errantry war, and all the errant knights will gather together. And um, the errantry war is when you could take that standard for the errants unlimitedly. So imagine that. Um, we wouldn't do that, but I mean, they would just they, they go off into a big crusade, and they gain new lands, and a bunch of knights die, and it kind of resets the balance of order of things. I don't have a problem in my games with Knights Errant dying. Is no, neither do I. They're, 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 that's what they're there for. <laughs> Die all the time. Maury wants to know if we're going to do the map 100%. I think that's the visual thing that we need. I, I, I have no idea how to do it, but I, I think something like that would be necessary. Well, if somebody out there could build a digital map, <laughs> or a map that they could at least update, like, I could do one in paint, but that would be terrible. Like if somebody who actually had graphic design skills could do a map, or take a or take a map from online, and just do an overlay of it, and then through Google Plus we could schedule when we know we have a game scheduled. Like I know I'm going to get a game in every Thursday. I could put something up there. But what does it show? I mean, let's say that I play a game against Lizardmen, right? What what am I going to show on the map? A little, you know, like um, Empire Total or Rome Total War, where there's like cross swords that shows the side of a battle. I mean. Um, you know, or what's what's the map going to show? Well, there has to there has to be a progression, right? What are we going for? We're starting at A and we're going to B, and what is what is B? What is what is end what is end game? We don't know what end game is yet. How do you win this thing? Yeah. Now, besides a map, we could also have a, some kind of chart of characters. You know, especially if we're um, if we're creating characters, then, um, you know, uh, chart that. I'm reading comments, by the way. Where I want a direction pick, picked. You know what? Tell them to get internet access and we'll do that. <laughs> One guy wants to see a bonus pot of items that can only be won by winning against an army that is drawn out of a hat. First person to find and win against that army gets the item or land. The only concern I have about that is, like, what if somebody draws what else? What if somebody draws beastmen? Something that is not... I don't want to restrain it based upon who we can necessarily play. That's, that's my concern. Because I can get an Empire game in like that, but... And that's what comes out of the hat. That's not really fair to, to you guys. And, and the same token for, for anything else. Yeah. 
Um, well, well if, if Meloria wanted a direction, I mean, it seems to me like we're, we're going down the direction of Bretonia. Mm -hmm. We're going down the direction of doing some kind of draft, either by individual magic items and virtues or a draft of characters. Um, we somehow split up the provinces. There needs to be some, some benefit to um, scoring a victory in other provinces, but there's also a risk because if you lose characters in those provinces, you lose the character and the, the, the owner of that province gets them. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah, there needs to be some kind of carrot and stick system in this, and I don't know what would be the best carrot and stick system. Well, you know what it should be then? You know, it, it would be kind of lame if I had a certain list of items and it, and it was pretty static, like it was hard to change. So what if um, I, can, I can choose a province, let's say I choose one of yours because I know you have a magic item that I want to be able to start using. Um, then I can say, great, I'm in your province. Now, it doesn't really affect you that much. I'm not fighting you. I'm fighting the skins in your area. But mm -hmm. if I win, then I have access now to that item or that virtue. But if I lose any characters that I lost in that loss, I lose, I might lose six or eight items. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's, that's Munchkin Quest again. <laughs> the board game where you walk around, you're in my room, and you get the benefits of the room, the province, whatever. But if you drop the stuff in there, you drop it. Um, but again, motivation to being in the province. The whole, the whole goal of, like, why are we walking, walking this whole path? Um, I, don't, I don't know that yet. We could all be in quest for the grail, but, but what does that entail? And what do we have to, what things do we have to check off? Well, I mean, I think this would take too long, but just to start the conversation, one thing could be your your object is to get all the virtues. You know, so there's a reason there to, I can't gain a virtue by fighting a, va a battle in my own province. Um, I can by winning battles in other provinces, but damn it, every time I try it and I lose it, I lose whatever virtues I had in that battle. Yeah, that would take for, for <laughs> that forever. forever. That's like 10th edition, maybe it'll be done. Yeah, that's that's tough. Um, I don't know if we're trying to make Super Lord or we're just trying to make Grail, we're just trying to get somebody to the Grail status. Um, oh, that's an idea. We could always just start with like a, a Mordenheim level knight who's like the leader of a war band and works his way up the ranks and gets stuff along the way. And he's yeah. in competition with his buddies who keep taking his stuff <laughs> and killing the thing he needed to kill to move up the rank. Yeah, what if there are a list of, like a scavenger hunt, a list of things you need to, to have done? Um, you know, this warband leader needs to kill a dragon. You know, needs to kill some kind of monster. So, so the, the army you go against isn't limited to one. But it, it needs to be an army, so you try to find out, hey, who has a monster and you can put together a list for you to play against, um, you know, or things like that. We could actually have criteria for a certain model to advance. So what if you had a, a knight-errant champion, and you try to get him to be a... Um, grail knight? A grail knight, yeah. We would just need to make the list um, well, but, yeah, I mean, I could, I could see that happening. Um, yeah, you could play pretty small games with that too, if you needed to, to get a couple games in in a night if you had to, or whatever it would be. But yeah, I, I don't dislike that idea. Yeah, one of one of Lorian's ideas was to all the games had to be at least two thousand points. I kind of like that. I think you could skew things if you, you know, did some five hundred point games or something. No, I'm fine with big games. Most people want to play twenty five hundred by me, so that's that's kind of the ballpark I would be in. Um, so as long as we're not capped at a specific point level, I'm okay with that. But if we go off at of 2,500, like I was begging on bended knee for 3,000, and nobody wants to do less than 2,500. So I'm kind of stuck. In you're, that space. Stuck. you're stuck what, at 25? Like it's pretty, pretty, pretty much, yeah. What's wrong with people up there? I, you know, because I would want to say if there's a scavenger hunt kind of thing going on, I want to say there needs to be at least one four or five thousand point game. I mean, 
I could schedule one, but I mean, every week if I had to do something different, oh. it would be hard. No, no, one no. I could definitely do. I, I don't have four or five thousand points for Tony, so I don't think I have that much. You know what's to keep it? You know, we should be able to, to do some kind of ally system too. I mean, do you, I mean, warriors wouldn't ally much with Bretonia. Do you have other armies? Empire. I can get Empire on demand. Yeah. So you have Empire. I've I've got Empire. Oh, I've got yeah. I like the checklist because then you have to buddy up with Empire to go do something. Like bring me the head of the chaos, of a Chaos Lord with the helm of many eyes. Yeah, that's a tough one. <laughs> that's like impossible. So we were talking earlier about how do we get viewer interaction. That's one thing we could do too. We could solicit the scavenger list checklist. We don't come up with it. We have viewers come up with, you know, what are those things? Kill a dragon, kill, you know, bring back the head of a chaos lord with a helm of many eyes. And, you know, whatever it is, bring a demon prince body. Um, you know, and, and so what we're trying to do is line up games to get those things done using the restrictions we have. It's, I mean, that's brutal. We, I mean, geez, we can... What are the restrictions, though? I mean, you got to get a reward for accomplishing a goal. So obviously if you kill a dragon, you should get, like, heroic killing blow, but how do I kill the dragon without heroic killing blow? No. Not one-on-one -on -one, I'm not. Maybe with my unit on the charge. Fifteen knights there with the infantry banner. Yeah, him in there. Yeah, maybe. you got to set it up. Or just defeat an army with a dragon in it and some... Uh, you're right. They should fi they should figure it out. We can't do all the damn work. Let them figure it out. <laughs> um, so e EQ2 Templar is offering to put together a three continent map with different areas. Um, hey, if you have the capability of doing stuff like that, just yeah, contact us and we'll we'll figure out something. I mean, I love the idea of that. Um, I like the idea of maybe every time. You know, we have the, the whole province idea we could use. You know, if you if you um, if you're willing, if you want to get other items so that you can take more versatile lists, like you can get heroic killing blow if you don't have it already. Then either maybe you get something off the scavenger list, a particular something, or you have to take over a province, or you have to win a battle in a province. And that's just that's actually really risky. I'm 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 looking to maybe gain one thing, and I'm risking. Wow, three characters with maybe two items each on average, so I'm risking six items. Um, well, we, yeah. could break the, we could break the mold a little bit, and if I killed a Chaos Lord with a Filth Mace, use Filth Mace. But that requires my opponent being okay with me doing that. But with Bretonia, I don't see people giving me any trash because Bretonia is so bad. So, like, my Chaos, if my Lord had a Filth Mace because he killed the Chaos Lord with a Filth Mace, I don't think anybody's going to cry a river over it. But... I mean, we could break the mold a little bit there. I don't know if that's essential, though, or not. Yeah. I also like to build in Storm of Magic stuff. Um, I'm not a few, huge fan of the Storm of Magic game, the rules, but the monsters and stuff. I love that. Have you see, Did you happen to see that? I think I had one or two battle reports when I had a, a um, monster list just pulled out of the Storm of Magic. I saw them. Storm and Magic actually never caught on here. Nobody even like touches it. I can I can make it I can make it happen, but it couldn't be very integral. I could do maybe one or two games over the course of the campaign. Well, I've never played a true uh, Storm and Magic game. I think I tried once and we screwed it up. I just mean the um, like playing against you know you're in Bretonia, right? And so all of a sudden all these monsters come storming out of the woods, and um, it was actually really hard to win with the monster list because of the whole, you know, you're never steadfast and you don't have good leadership, no BSB. So you almost have to give them um, some help there. But, you know, I don't know, could you do that? Do you think you would have other players there that could put together enough models to put to get, to have a monster match list? Yeah, and I have, I have plenty of monsters from just Warriors alone. Malorian keeps jumping all over the board. He's just aggressive to get an answer, to get, get something solved. It's like, yeah, we should do that. Yeah, we should do that. Yeah, we should do that. Like, which one do you want? <laughs> Throw three into the pot. What is the goal? We need an end state. What we're starting here and we're going there. What what wins this thing? That's that we well, don't have a start and an end. You have to. You have no. You you end it by completing your scavenger list. Okay, so we have we're starting with nothing and we're going to something. Okay. 
So the scavenger list, I mean, however long it is, it could be the head of a hydra, you know. It, you know, it could just be a wide variety of things. Or maybe it's a huge list and we have to do a certain number of them. That way we have some flexibility with the, the opponents we have available to us. I like the huge list and, like, two, three, or five get clumped together. Like, you get a hydra, you get a dragon, you get a demon prince, you get, like, one of these five monsters and you, you can get Heroic Killing Blow, or you can check off that box. Yes. Because then that gives some flexibility, because nobody runs dragons by me for obvious reasons. Cannons are everywhere, and I'm not going to get a dragon game. But Hydra, yeah, I can get a Hydra. I can get a Demon Prince, you know. What if we have to, again, what if, okay, so I'm backtracking a little bit, but what if we start off without any virtues or magic items, or something along those lines, right? We just we say that's how it starts off, but you can earn them. So if, if you do one of these five things, you get Heroic Killing Blow. If you do one of these five things, you can get the Birth Sword of Carcassonne. Um, I, think we can, I think we can auction off for the items, because without any magical items, how am I building my army? I'm going to take a naked Bretonian Lord with a lance. You, do, that's, you take a Malorian list. I mean, he takes... He, he, <laughs> I mean, Malorian, he, he doesn't know the magic items exist. He, he just brings bodies. And, um, you know, it, they, they can make for good, good lists. I, I like the auction for a few items, uh, just to give us something to go with. I like earning virtues, and I like earning more obscure items, but especially if we're going to have certain promises, we should be able to pull something out of the armory that's valuable. Even if it's not the Bretonian items, even if it's just you're restricted to the Warhammer rulebook items. Although most of them are better than the Bretonian items anyway, barring a handful of them. Yeah, but but if the but if the objective was it, the objective is to win all of the virtues of Bretonia. You start off with no virtues. Um, you can start off with all the magic items in the main rule book. You can start off with the magic items that seem relevant to the provinces you control, but no virtues. And to get every for every virtue, there's there's a a, a certain criterion you have to do. You know. I'm just looking to see how many virtues there are, since there's only like well, two I ever cared about. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you either. I'm gonna guess eight. Fourteen. I was close. That's a lot. 14. Yeah, but you could actually get multiple in this in a single game. We can always just make no restrictions and just you have to you, you, you don't get virtues. You cannot take a virtue. That's a gimp in and of itself, because these virtues are very good. So you can take the magical items, you can take whatever, but you can't take a virtue. And you can you have to earn the virtues, and then as you earn them they kinda of go on your belt. And then you can pull one out because you can only ever take one in the, on a character, you can pull them out and put them on. Like Virtue of the da Joust, you can earn that in a game with your lord doing something on the charge with a lance. Yep. First one to get all virtues wins. Yeah, the Virtue Race. And you can get, like you say, you can get multiples throughout the game and have the, have the subscribers decide what are the qualifications for getting a Virtue. It can't just be one thing, but a list of a couple things per Virtue that you can check off in a game. And obviously you, you'll battle report it so that way you have proof that you did it. But Malorian won't win because he's there's no way he'll ever get the virtue of empathy. <laughs> there's no peasants in this army. Who is he going to be empathetic to? Because he gave them all to me. Well, you know that, right? Yeah, I know that. But I mean, you know, he didn't keep like ten in his pocket. Nope. Like I'll, I'll go through my house and I'll find a peasant here or there. <laughs> I mean, they're just everywhere. This one dude said, Chaos Lord of Hell with Many Eyes is a piece of cake. Try finding the toenail of Wood Elf Ward answer. <laughs> yeah, hidden on sixes, yeah. G good luck finding a Wood Elf player in general. No, we've got around here. they got really two excellent players with really tough lists. We had one around here and he cheated <laughs> profusely. I like the virtue checkoff list. It's simple. It's something to follow. We could add other, and it's simple, but you can add other elements into it, like other restrictions. You know, 
to screw each other and, and whatnot. But how can we make it interactive with each other? Or is that just going to complicate things? Because yeah. I want to mess with you if I can, man. I want to make you just have have to use something you would never want to use. The fifty bowmen. You have to have fifty bowmen in your list. <laughs> Well, that could be a separate element. So the goal, the primary objective is to chase for these virtues. The secondary objective is screwing over each other, which indirectly affects our ability to get the virtues. Because at the end of the day, win, lose, or draw, my lord can get the virtue that day. He can get a virtue and die. He can get a virtue and lose the game. But... Uh, I don't know if I agree with that. Like, if he had to kill a monster and then he dies, I'm thinking, you didn't get the virtue. I mean, the dude would be, needed to... Would be killed at first and then died. Awesome. So he has the virtue in heaven, or wherever the hell. <laughs> All right. So you have to, but but you don't have to win the game. The Lord can survive. Quite often, the only thing left alive was my Lord. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd be cool with that. So the Lord has to survive. He has to check off the box. But how do we screw each other? Hey, Lorian just said he can get the virtue of empathy. So. Well, I wasn't worried about if he could get it or not. <laughs> I guess we could do the province thing where you're restricted to war gear items. Oh, I mean, I'm not. I'm, I don't think. I think we've had a lot of good ideas. I don't think we have to force all of the good ideas in there. Mm -hmm. Lauren says he likes the virtue checkoff, but he would make it simple and just say you have to win using that virtue, and I can't see it after that because it's a stupid thing. If I could show uh, it. Interaction is the viewers picking the next virtue the person is going for. That's true. You have to win using the virtue on your lord, so you're forced to use all of the virtues. Well, that's two different things, because you have to... You don't have the virtue when you're working towards the virtue. He's saying to get the virtue, you have to use it, which, you, which you're right, is a catch-22. You can't take the virtue and be trying to get the virtue at the same time. Yeah, because you, give me a heroic killing blow and give me a monster match list. <laughs> yeah, I'll pull it off. I like the subscribers writing the restrictions for the, how do you obtain the virtue. And Are you looking at the up-to-date comments? Yeah, I'm reading them. All right. Drop the province idea. Yeah, it's pretty much on the back burner anyway. Yeah, it just got complicates it. I don't like Maloran saying let them pick what virtue we're going for, but like you said, we might be achieving multiple virtues in a game. And it might not be I might not be able to get the particular game I need at the particular time for the particular virtue I'm going after. So I'd rather just stumble along and run into the virtues I need when I need them. Yeah, so just to be clear, T Strauss says no, you have you have access to all the virtues, but in order to check it off, you must win using that virtue on your general. That's not what I was thinking of. One thing I like about that is I do like the idea that you have to use the virtues, because otherwise, like you said, man, there's like two that I ever use. Yeah, and, and I like the idea of, no, you have to, you know, so maybe to get the virtue, not only you have to earn it the first time, but then you have to actually, I don't know, use it in a game and either win the game or do something with it or some, I don't know, you know, the forces to take it. I'm trying to think how to put this together because it's almost there. Hmm. Yeah, like one person just said, one game to earn the virtue, win one game with that virtue to keep it. That's kind of what I'm thinking of. I kind of like that. So you pick the virtue you're going to use on your general. You win that game with it, and then it's yours? Yeah, we, it's going to take one game. Let's say you go to one game, and you, um, let's say you win three virtues. Like, it's just insane. Everything went right. You got three virtues. So it's like they're, they're half done. But now you have to play future games where you actually take those virtues, and maybe you just have to take them. Maybe you have to take them and, and win the game. Maybe you have to take them and accomplish kind, something along the lines of what that virtue is supposed to do. Um, something like that. But basically you have to earn it and then you have to earn the right to keep it. So if I had, yeah, we, we, we could do that. We're looking at like 30 games though. Which is whatever, but it's just... 
One of the virtues can't be taken by the general. I guess we'd have to break that rule. There's no, I don't think there's anything saying we have been talking about the general. I thought we were. Oh, no. I don't think you just have to take it. They could be, you know, again, you take a, a, a hero level character, and if it's Bretonia, you know, that's kind of what you do a lot of times with competitive lists, right? You take multiple hero level characters. Mm -hmm. you've, you've got room to take multiple virtues, and, and um, yeah, I mean, if, if it's possible to, to get two or three virtues in a single game, and the next game you could take them all. You know, it could happen. I mean, we're kind of assuming we're not going to be losing, because every time you lose a game, I don't know if you necessarily lose the virtue, but you're probably not gaining a whole lot either. Well, if we have to keep losing the virtues, I don't think we'll ever get done. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to lose the virtues. So one game to pull off what the virtue is to gain access to it, and then we have to use the virtue to lock it down? Yeah, and that'd be really easy to keep track of, and this spreadsheet would keep track of that. So I'm fine with that, and that can be tweaked. How are we screwing each other? I'm sorry, what did you say? How are we screwing each other? I'm trying to... Because the Bretonia book is full of traps. Terrible unit selection choices. And... Give me one bad one. I mean... Lord on Hippogriff. I love them. I never take them. There's a reason. <laughs> that reason's called a cannon. So you hide them. Behind what? Uh, the, Walking the, the, behind a building? The table that I set up with all these buildings everywhere, you just hop around. Yeah, did you see my game today? I was, I was gracious enough to have a fence. My demon prince was molesting that fence like you wouldn't believe it. Hiding behind it, and he still died. So... <sighs> Yeah, I played a game today against demons, and um, dude's like a 40k player that's just going over to fantasy, and he's just like he has two special characters. He's got one horde of blood letters, and everything else is just nothing on the table, just really high point costed stuff. And uh, we quit at turn three. Really? Like, yeah, he had nothing left. Wow. <sighs> They don't make the new books like they did the old books. That's for certain. And they don't remake the old books at all. <laughs> that, that broken piece of crap sticks around for like 10 years. <sighs> God. Give an example, if you don't mind. Give me an example of a couple of the lesser known virtues. I'm looking. The virtue of noble disdain. The knight hates all enemies using missile weapons, including war machine crews. In addition, any unit the knight joins never takes panic tests caused by suffering 25% from shooting or magic. I've actually used that. I put it on a, on a hero level, put him with a small unit of knights errant on the flank chasing down war machines. I could see this on a, on a, on a paladin on a peg who clears chaff and, and missile units and war machines out. Yeah. See, I think that's viable. It's viable. I don't see it as competitive, but... I'm just trying to figure out how we can mess with each other in this. I think it has to be around army composition, like... The virtue kind of dictates the attitude of the character, and the attitude of the character kind of dictates where they're from or what they would or would not take in a battle. So what if we disagree? Let's say that, you know, we know that you're playing next, and you, um, you've, you've recently had a, a virtue, and you're going to take it this game, right? So you just mm -hmm. tell us, these are the virtues I'm going to take. Then we, we decide some, some army composition thing that makes sense fluff-wise for that virtue? A virtue tax. Every yeah. virtue you take has a tax where you have to take a certain thing or yeah. a certain, can compose your unit in a certain way. Yeah. And we can just decide that together. You know, we get on here and... Yeah, make the, help the, let the subscribers do some of it. Like, obviously, the virtue of empathy and you're on foot. You're going to have to take some pe peasants. Yeah, I would say at least, like... 
a six unit. As the models. Yeah. A unit of something. Bullshit. 60 models. <laughs> like, yeah, the virtue of noble disdain, you have to take the you have to take a unit of Pegasus Knights, you have to put a paladin on a Pegasus or something like that. Virtue of Stoicism, you need to take a questing knight unit. There's a gimp. They're terrible. Yeah, they're all right. I, I know you're gonna say they're good, but <laughs> they're terrible. I I th I don't know. I think every unit of the book. Well, I've just, I've used them all, and um, yeah, they're uh, very situational, certainly. So you earn the virtue in the game in general. You do whatever the qualifier is to earn it. And then when you go to lock it down and you say, I'm, I'm trying to lock down this virtue, I want to lock down the virtue of stoicism, or however you say this word. And that's what we see. That's what we're trying to uh, slow you down, right? Yeah. So I, I, I earn the virtue of stoicism through whatever the qualifiers were. Now I want to lock it down so I can check it off my list. The qualifier is, in general, what we agree to, you need to take a unit of questing knights. Some will be good, some will be bad, but I mean... Now, I would argue for precedent. So, um, if you went for it and we required you to take questing knights, when I went for it, I would say, don't make it tougher than that, I'll take questing knights, you know? Well, I would just say, in general, that's the, that's the thing. Yeah, it's not we, like we specifically tailor the the screwing. The screwing is this. It's it's known ahead of time. Yeah. Yeah. Virtue of hero, heroism. You want to lock that down? Great. No trebs. You want to kill that dragon? Go go kill it yourself. <laughs> Ride your lord into it. Okay. So somebody T. Strauss just threw out the idea that is earning the virtues just needlessly complicated. I mean, like you said, it, it turns into a, does it turn to a thirty game campaign? What if you don't have to earn them as much as you just have to lock them down? Shortens it. Yeah, I'm all for shortening the amount of games we have to play because we're all limited to how many we can get. We all don't want to play Bretonia all the time for the next year. So but if this is, but this is only one game every six weeks for any one of us. Mm -hmm. This isn't going to affect my gameplay. This just means I'm going to dust off Bretonians every month and a half. If yeah, that's I, true. If anything, I'd rather be, be able to speed it up. I'd rather be able to say, no, I want to play one game every two weeks. I want to be playing one game every two weeks for this. Mm -hmm. No, and I could do that too. That's not a problem. Yeah. So how about you just say you're, you're, you're taking these lures and each you're taking these virtues and every virtue that you take comes with a, comes with a tax. No, take questing knights, no trebuchets, whatever. And you can select based upon your list composition how many virtues you're going to take in it, knowing each virtue you take adds another restriction or removes a, a unit selection. So I could be like, I'm going to take four virtues and try to knock them all out at once. Okay, well that's four taxes. And then, is it done or do you have to win the game? Or well, you you ha I, I, I would say you probably just have to win the game because if you're not earning it, you don't really need to be pulling off the thing that it does. It's just the taxes are structuring your army in such a way that it's going to be difficult. Yeah, but in theory, then I could just say I'm going for I'm going to take ten characters, each with a virtue. I'm going to go get my ass kicked, but I've just locked down ten virtues. Well, no, you have to win the game. That's what I'm saying. You have to win the. There's a difference between I have to win the game with the army I've structured, and I have to pull off the thing that the virtue speaks to. Like I can, t I take the virtue of heroism in every game, but I don't always necessarily hero killing blow a dragon every game. Sometimes it's a bunch of ogres, noblars. I mean, it could be bad, but I mean, I don't know. I kind of, I think my knee jerk reaction is I like you have, you know, it, it gives your comp, and to to lock it down, not only do you have to take it, but you have, yeah, like you said, you have to do. What it, kind of what it, something that makes sense for what it's designed for, and that character needs to survive the game, or or you win, because if you win again, then the dude's just knocked unconscious. You can argue that and go on your way, but you know, but if you lose the game and the dude dies, I don't care what the hell he did. 
Yeah. So the character has to survive, or you have to win to say you secured the virtue. You take whatever virtues you want to take, but they come with taxes. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. And, you, and you know, Malorian says, win the game is a must or else it's too easy. But again, if I take five virtues and I win that game... It wasn't with the five. The five taxes were pretty extreme. I mean, I don't even know. I, I think you're going to hit a critical mass where you can't even really build a good army if you take, try to take too many virtues. I don't know. <laughs> Limited to maybe two virtues a game, two or three a game. You know, not don't make it crazy where we just take each take like ten paladins. Yeah, I like that. I like something like that. Um, maybe three because three is like the magic number of characters. Luke Davis has the idea. Maybe you can come up with a list of heroic things a character or unit could do, and then you have to pre you have, you do a pre listed feat to get a virtue. I mean, really, just do we want to say you have it, you can use it, and then you have to secure it, or do you want to say you have to gain it? I mean, I like the idea that you can take the virtue. I, the virtues are very important to making Bretonia competitive. It's like one of the few things we have left in the book that make the army more viable. Yeah. So I like the ability to take the virtue at, at, at will, but you pay the tax in, in army composition or restriction, and you have to pull off, to some extent, the thing that the virtue is about to say, check, I've done this. I took the virtue of heroism, I paid the tax of not taking trebuchets, and I killed a hydra with it. Yeah, you have to kill done. something significant with it. I like that. And so really, just you know, we just have to come up with a list of, great, here are the virtues, here are the, here are the gimps, here are the, um, the, the requirements for making it work. Yeah. Yeah, lock it at three a game, because normally I, it's a lord and two paladins for the front rank anyway, but like three is a is a flexible number, but it's not crazy. So three three virtues max. Can we make an editable document in Google? Where one of the Google applications that allows the subscribers to go there and either submit and or tweak things? Vote on restrictions and whatnot. Um, well, we certainly could do do something where they could vote on it. Um, we could do something where people could modify it, but we'd kind of need to to do it person by person. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, and if it was possible to make anybody their dog do it, I wouldn't, because then you get some jerk head that doesn't know what have anything to do with us, you know. Mm -hmm. Malorian, he's like, okay, let's make the list. <laughs> yeah, and Malorian's very get it done. My goodness, man. Um, if we make the list, then we're not involving the subscribers. I really want the subscribers to make the list, and, and 300 ideas would be much better than three. Uh, I love that. I, I don't think Malorian's would be opposed to that either. I like the idea of, of um, what, what can we do to, uh, yeah, to structure it, invite people, and get get people to create that for us, or, you know, at least generate all the ideas, and then we just kind of compile them. Um, it's not, I mean, it's not hard to make a video, and then they can do it through comments. I'm not sure that's the most creative way. You know, Google certainly has documents, but... We could always just list the virtues text as what it is, like the little blurb here, and what the rules are for it, and then just have an ability for, like you said, for them to put comments below, and then we select the ones that we think are most applicable for it, or we get we pick a couple guys that would actually do the selection process for us. People who know Bretonia. Yeah, we could actually go to the Bretonia website. The round table. Yeah. Hmm. So, Lori, we don't want, we don't know what to do next. What's our next action item? Make the list. <laughs> I 
Yeah, so I mean, but I almost think we need some kind of, um, I don't know, maybe I'm just wrapped up in the YouTube world. I mean, it almost seems we need a kickoff video saying, okay, this is what we're designing. Here are the instructions if you want to participate. This is, this is how to do it. And then we decide on that, and we kick it off again with some kind of Google Hangout or a video or something. Well, we want to know if we're still doing a draft. I didn't think about a draft being in this structure. We could. I mean, the only thing about the draft is you have to take virtues out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm okay with it. I don't care. I think I, the draft idea sounds kind of fun. Draft, draft is fun. Draft either way. I mean, it's another additional gimp, but whatever. It doesn't really bother me too much. I know. I'm just. I'm, I'm going to lose like ten games in a row with Bertone. Oh yeah, I'm going to do so bad. It's, it's going to be bad. Uh, frequency of the games. I think we said it anywhere between once every two to four weeks to get the game in, right? Well, originally it was is six. You had six weeks to play a game because one of us was playing every two weeks. I think that just bogs things down. I don't. I don't want to wait a month and a half to be able to play my next game. Uh, at the same time, if I'm able to play five games a week and you're able to play one game a week, I don't want that to benefit. You know, that that kind of makes it unfair as well. So, two every two to three weeks. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, let's just say every two weeks and, you know, I guess worst case scenario, I mean, there are times when I can't do it in a two-week period, but, you know, so you, you don't make progress that week. You know, it's not the end of the world. So every two weeks we're going to have one game that can be played, and we're not, Brian, we're not, we're not going to wait for somebody to finish before we play our game. It's just this is week whatever of the two-week block, and you have to play your game. And you have to announce ahead of time, here's here's my list, these are the virtues I'm going after, this is how I'm adhering to the restrictions based upon the virtue. Well, really what we should do is we should have, every two weeks, we should have one of these Google Hangouts and just um, call yeah. an update on the campaign, what's going on, what we're going for next. Mm -hmm. You know, opportunity to trash talk. Yeah. No, and that's good interaction as well, because this is pretty interactive. I think the only hurdle we have left is how we're going to get the subscribers to identify the, the big qualifiers. What's the tax for taking the, each virtue, and what's the thing we have to pull off? And I mean, we could do that, but we would obviously like to involve everybody else. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, if we wanted just to come to see how many ideas we could get, one, all three of us could do a video on our channels independently asking for the same things and we could go to the Roundtable Bretonia uh, website do the same thing there and then compile all the ideas and then we just decide. You know, that'd be one way to do it. Yeah, we can turn it in two weeks. The issue I have is that we share subscribers. It's not like my subscribers are unique to me and yours are unique to you. So, it's the same fantasy community. So honestly, you're going to get the most, more, and you get the second most. I'm going to get the third most, but it's going to be the same people putting the same thing down. So I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I get the impression that Lorian has a lot of viewers that are not that don't view mine. Um, but again, but we also go to the Roundtable of Bretonia. We could go to Warseer. We go to you know any of those. We go to multiple if we wanted. And um, you know we're just trying to drum up ideas. And not only does it drum up ideas, but it drums up um, potential followers for the campaign, which would be kind of fun. Yeah, that makes sense. I might just do a Google Hangout and get as many of the people who watch my videos who, who've done um, talking with videos with me beforehand. And even though they're not Bretonian, it's just the, the, the pool of ideas and just have a big spiel. And that'll be my list submission of ideas into the pool. And if we each did something to that extent, and more, you can do it on Warseer and you can do it however you want to do it, um, we'll, we'll get a cohesive list of a whole bunch of ideas. And then we could pick from that. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm not a forum guy. I don't. I don't do a lot of forum stuff, and I wouldn't chase after a forum post 
but I know Malorian does. War, I mean, he's very well known on Warseer, obviously, and could chase that. So, and I I used to post on Roundtable Bretonia, just post my battle reports, but I I wouldn't feel bad going there, and um, there should be a lot of people there that would like to get involved with something like this. Yeah, the few, the, the like the five or ten people who still play Bretonia, yeah, <laughs> play it and actually care about it. I really, I really enjoy. I mean, I haven't played him in a, in a, a couple of years, I guess, but I, I felt like I did well with him in eighth, and um, I didn't feel like I was really gimped. 2012 was a good year, and then it stopped. <laughs> then we all moved on. It was done. But yeah, I, I'd, I'd be cool with that, and we just come back in two weeks and discuss. You know, we'll type up whatever we find, and we'll discuss it on a hangout, and we'll make the selections live as to what the 14 qualifiers will be, the tax and the thing you have to pull off. Yeah. Cool. Well, is that it for tonight? I think I think so. I think we I think we're yeah, Malorian keeps telling us to get it done. I understand that. I get it. Put more hamsters in the internet wheel. I'm sorry. Right. With the faces. Yeah, I, I will I will put up something in the next week or so where I'll have my subscribers join a Google Hangout and we'll just talk about it and we'll go down the list and solve it, solve for it. Uh, and I'll invite people to live speak. That's how I will figure out my list for those who care and okay. want to participate. I guess yeah, Malorian will hawk more here. Yeah, well, he'll do what he wants to do. I didn't. I don't see his comment, but but yeah, I'll do a YouTube and I'll probably go to to the roundtable site just to see. Okay, so just to, I just want to confirm. So we're you take the virtue. There's a we have to find out what the tax is for each virtue and the thing you have to do with, during the game to check it off. Right, those are the two big things per virtue. Yeah, and that's fourteen things, so there'll be twenty-eight things. Okay. Um. Yeah. And the the requirement to check it off again that that may need to be more than one thing each. I mean, it may need to be a variety of things because you don't have that much control over who you're playing. So, or at least be broad, like a monster instead of a dragon. Yeah, I was going to say it would have to be a monster or it would have to be a particular unit type like monstrous infantry or undead or whatever it may be. But, um, yeah, it'll have to be pretty... It'll have to be broad. It can't be super specific. Okay. But we'll agree with it on our next hangout when Malorian gets internet. So... Oh, is he moving out of Canada? I don't know. You might have to. <laughs> you know. Hey, man, you can see the comments that I can't see. Are there any recent comments we need to, to look at before we sign off? Malorian would make it one thing each, but don't be specific. Yeah, that might be what it winds up being. Like, somebody might say it has to be um, this many wound monster or whatever, but we might just high-level it, and that'll be a call we'll have to make on our next one. Okay. Yeah, I don't I don't see anything else too much. Malorian's just looking for a conclusion, whatever it is. <laughs> it's just oh boy it's going to be one of those isn't it <laughs> alright cool man alright well um, I'll be in touch we'll figure out the details as we go along but let's plan on trying to get this going in, in, um, or get have the next hangout in about two weeks okay I'm on board alright see you man alright see you